Hello, and welcome back to Life Lessons with Sheila. I am so glad that you're here. Today we're going to talk about, is God preparing you for a comeback? I have to first tell you that today's video comes from the constant reminder all around me that I am due for a comeback story of a lifetime. Maybe it will just affect my personal life, but it's going to be huge. Why? Because we serve a huge God who is capable of mighty things, even today in 2024. Be sure to stick around to the end because the last comeback story I share will blow your minds. Why? Because it is so relatable to all of us. Oh, and if you missed this morning's prayer, go back and check it out when this video is over. I will be linked up at the end as well as in the description box below. It's very relevant to today's video. It seems every time we turn around, there are signs of shattered dreams. Reality in itself appears as a devastating darkness with faint glimmers of light at the end of a tunnel. Yet, we are given the choice if we let our circumstance define our ambition or if we will instead turn to God in a kingdom mindset of his truths and reality. Life will appear tattered and ravaged, but perhaps those setbacks are preceding a comeback. Here are five biblical and real life stories to, that prove any situation can be turned around. First up is Joseph's life story. In the Bible, it's full of tragedy through triumph stories, and this is exceedingly evident in the story of Joseph in Genesis, the very first book in the Bible. Joseph was the son of Jacob and a wild dreamer. As a teen, he was given wild, vivid, and picturesque dreams from God, but his delivery and sharing such visions provoked his brothers. His brothers began to detest Joseph from a fiery gut of jealousy and literally sold him into slavery. slavery. Joseph's path is not made easier as a slave either. He was framed by the wife of his owner, Potiphar, and thrown into prison. At this point, the dreams Joseph had of a prominent position would appear impossible. Imagine an intimate being raised to the point of being in power, yet God is the God of the comeback story, and this was not the end of Joseph's tale. Joseph's gifts of dreaming and interpreting dreams had not been stolen from him, like his freedom. Even in prison, he was deciphering dreams for others. When Pharaoh had a perplexing dream that no one could seem to untangle, God had ensured Joseph would have his comeback moment. Genesis 41.9 explains how a prisoner came to be in front of the man who sat on the throne of Egypt. Then the chief cupbearer said to Pharaoh, I remember my offenses today when Pharaoh was angry with his servants and put me, the chief baker, in custody in the house at the captain at the guard. We dreamed on the same night, he and I, each having a dream with its own interpretation. A young Hebrew was there with us a servant of the captain of the guard. When we told him, he interpreted our dreams to us, giving an interpretation to each man according to his dream. God is also the God of details. Had it not been for the cupbearer being sent into custody and given a specific dream, Joseph would not have had this opportunity to share his gift with someone directly in service of Pharaoh. God ensured each detail was in order so that Joseph would find himself in front of the ruler to unlock this mystery. After he solves the riddle of the dream, Pharaoh is so elated and full of confidence in Joseph that he makes Joseph his right-hand man, fulfilling Joseph's teenage dream of ruling. The old saying of, it's always darkest before the dawn, is another way of saying, despite how dark aspects of your story may look now, this is not the end. God is the God of details, and when we take him at his word, he is working all things together for his good. You can find that in Romans 8.28. We can rest assured that the dawn will come. Dawn may not appear as we have imagined it. It may feel as if the night lasted forever, and the moments before the dawn may prove wretchingly painful. But hold hope that the God of Joseph still works miracle stories today. The second story is Job's glorious restoration. We've talked about Job a couple times recently in, on this channel, but perhaps one of the most glorious of comeback stories in the Bible is that of Job. 
His story begins by explaining how Job was an upstanding man. In fact, he had the most integrity and character of anyone on earth. The devil saw this and sought to test Job's loyalty to God through trial. God allows this because God knows Job's true devotion to him. Even in the midst of calamity, Job, through story, through the story, loses his wealth, lands, and even his own family. Yet he never curses God. Many of his friends gather around him, but offer poor advice. His own wife encourages him to curse God and die. Yet Job perseveres. Job feels like anguish of his afflictions. He even aches and he exists, but he does not profane his God. In time, God and Job have an in-depth conversation in which God affirms his sovereignty. Job attests to the truth that no plan of God's can be thwarted. You can find that in Job 42. This is pertinent because it circles back to despite the downfalls in life, God is still sovereign and no plan of his can be thwarted. God rewards Job for his commitment to him and blesses him doubly with what he had before. All that Job lost was just restored to its original status. It is blessed to be to a multitude. It was not just restored to its original status. It is blessed to a multitude. Job held on through the storms of his life. To the world it appeared that he lost everything, but he did not lose his faith or his God. When life seems stripped away to nothing, not all is lost. God is always there, even when the loudest sound is silence. Just as God wept through and ushered in a comeback for Job, life can change in a blink of an eye for good. The third story is Harry Reese's Persistence. The most popular candy on planet Earth, not surprisingly, is the Reese's Peanut Butter Cup. But the backstory of this perfect recipe finds its most prominent ingredient from the heart of its creator, H.B. Reese. Harry Reese was not originally a confectioner. In fact, the very trade that would one day become his legacy was the same trade that devastated his life. See, Reese worked for the Hershey Company in Chocolate Town, USA, also known as Hershey, Pennsylvania. He worked as a manager of the Brown Barn for the Hershey Company. This position in the company provided security, stability, and sufficient income for his large family. In 1919, the Round Barn was closed in an effort to save money. Harry Reese found himself the father and provider of tin with no job. It is not hard to imagine that this was a devastating blow to the man. It was likely the kind of sucker punch to the gut that would defeat someone. But Harry Reese chose to take this bitter reality and find a sweet solution. No pun intended. Because of his position as manager of the Round Barn, he learned many valuable skills of what it took to create chocolate. Several attempts were made in his own home kitchen before the fateful day when the marriage of chocolate and peanut butter would at last come to be. The Reese's Cup soon became a local favorite and it caught the attention of the Hershey Company. Hershey sought a partnership with Reese, supplying the chocolate for his, cho for his chocolate peanut butter cups. Hershey's would buy the H.B. Reese Company after Harry Reese's death, with his descendants still receiving a percentage of its earnings to this day, showing that his legacy lives on. It would appear that at one point in Reese's life that his story was reaching towards tragedy, but that was not the end of his story. Act two of his story proved to be the comeback from the setback, but it only happened because the mold was broken in his life of a typical story. Number four is Walt Disney's 180 turn turnaround. Disney seemed to have the Midas touch when it comes to media, but that was not always the case for its, early, for its founder, Walt Disney. Walt Disney began as an animator and cartoonist in the early 1920s. He founded his first venture, Laugh-O-Gram Studio, which produced several short animated films. By 1923, Disney found himself deep in deep debt and was forced to declare bankruptcy. Along with his brother, Roy, Disney attempted a second studio, and it was during these years that the idea for the cartoon mouse sparked Disney's imagination. He originally wanted to call the friendly mouse Mortimer, 
but his wife thought he should have a gentler name, like Mickey. The years that followed suit with the creation of Mickey Mouse, movies such as Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, and other creations skyrocketed Disney to success. It would have been exceedingly easy for Disney to quit after laugh went belly up, but Disney did not let his circumstances dictate his motivation. Today, Disney Studios stands giant, all because of the drive of one man and his mouse. <laughs> And for the last one, and this is one that touches me just because this man touches me, and it's Steve Harvey's comeback story. Steve Harvey was living in his car with $35 to his name, ready to give up when God spoke to him. Steve Harvey's story will inspire you to never give up and that God is never late. He's always on time. Back in 1991, Steve was homeless, but he had a dream. He wanted to get into show business. He knew beyond the shadow of a doubt God was calling him to entertainment. Steve Harvey possessed the gift of making people laugh and had from childhood. After months of living in his car, he was ready to give up. He had come to the end of his rope when God stepped in. God always has a, a tendency to do that. Steve Harvey remembers praying, Come on God, I've been trying to make this dream come true and you left me out here like this. He said God responded and told him, If you get up, I'm going to take you places you ain't never been. <laughs> God then set Steve on a journey and a deep lesson in faith. Steve rang home to check his answering machine, and he learned that he was offered a spot on the Apollo show in New York. Instantly, he was crushed because he had no way to make it from Florida to New York with a mere $35 in his pocket. He was absolutely crushed. As Steve Harvey was about to call back and say he couldn't make it, he noticed that there was another message. So he contend he checked that one too. And he was stunned to learn that God was literally providing a way to get to New York with a $150 comedy gig. Steve Harvey decided on that dark moment to trust God one step at a time. Even though he did not know how it was going to work out, he gave his dreams, burdens, and worries to God. That night, he did so well the comedy club invited him back for another show and paid him another $150. Now he had the means to make it to New York and he was able to book a flight for $99. Isn't that incredible? Just when you think you're backed in a corner, there's no way out. God pours out his blessings and multiplies them. When Steve made it to New York, he became an overnight sensation. God opened doors, provided a way, and fulfilled the dream Steve had. It was the beginning of his career as a host on television and as a comedian. Steve Harvey shares his story saying this was his comeback moment. He said everyone has a turn back moment. It's the moment when you either go forward or turn back and give up everything. There's one guarantee, if you give it up, it will never happen. Faith is everything. God is always on time. He's never too late. God is always coming. He is never too late, and He is always on time. Faith is absolutely everything. God is a God of restoration and compassion, and He cares far more than we can even think or imagine about our lives individually. For so many, the uncertainty of life, unrest in our culture, and the unknowns of the future have left many feeling defeated, overwhelmed, or crushed in spirit. Yet, this is an instance in which we can turn our faces towards God, the God who split seas, makes prisoners rulers, and defies death itself. Your setback is not your curtain call. It is a setup before Act 2. I'm going to leave you with this one last quote. The comeback is always greater than the setback. So if you're facing any kind of setback, just have faith that your comeback is coming and will be far greater than your setback was. Just don't give up. Until next time, bye.